Shalom Israel, most high in Christ, bless, most high in Christ, bless. We are back with another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Amaziah. With me today, I have Soldier Mahalalil. I have Soldier Mahalalil with me today. So all praise to the most high brothers and sisters. We're going to get into the another topic, another topic to, to, to edify our people. The name of the topic, can you be renewed again? Can you be renewed again? Okay, so let's get right into it. We're going to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 6 and verse 4. Hebrews 6 and 4. Let's go. Hebrews, chapter 6 and verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. So. Verse 4 says it's impossible to renew who were once enlightened. Once enlightened to what? Once in, enlightened to their nationality. They, they must keep God's laws with faith in Christ to receive the kingdom of heaven. You repent now. You begin keeping the laws. You coming around. You getting all this good knowledge. All that, all that, that clean glass of water you getting now. Now, right? Read it again. 4. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. You were once enlightened. You found out you was an Israelite. You began keeping God's laws. You keeping these Sabbaths, these high holy days. You learning. You applying. Go ahead. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. You know what it takes to get the kingdom. Keeping God's laws of faith in Christ. Go ahead. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. And have tasted the good word of God. Uh-huh. And the powers of the world to come. And you taste, you know of the powers of the world to come. Read. They shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Uh huh. Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So, I didn't choose to wake you up. I just taught the word. The bishop just teaches the word. The deacons, the captains, the officers, the soldiers. We just teach the word. It's. God that chose you to wake up. It's Christ that chose you to wake up. Now, he chose you to wake up. You decide, I don't want that no more. I'm going back to my sin. I like going to the games on a Saturday afternoon. I like breaking the Lord's Sabbath. I like keeping my Sabbath on Sunday. I like sleeping with multiple hoes all over the, all over the block. I like selling drugs and shooting up the block. Now you put in Christ to an open shame. It's like you put Christ on the cross all over again. He chose you. You gave Christ your behind the kiss. Give me Matthew 12 and 31. Let's stick to the New Testament. Matthew 12 and 31. Let's see what that says. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasph blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Read it again. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin. All manner of sin. You could be a homosexual. You could still repent. You could be a, um, a, a thief. You can repent. A liar can repent. A murderer can repent. Read. And blasphemy. And blaspheme. You, you, tell, you, you tell a lies against God. Maybe you think the, the white people in Israel are the Jews. That's blasphemy. Idolatry, all of that is all blasphemy. Read. Shall be forgiven unto men. See that? All kind, of, all manner of sin may be forgiven unto men. Hold that. Acts 13 and 38. Let's go a little further. Acts, we coming right back. Acts 13, 38. Acts chapter 13 and verse 38. Let's see if we can read what we just read somewhere else. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man. This man is Jesus the Christ. Through Christ is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. See that the forgiveness of your sins is preached unto you through Christ. Read 39. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. All that believe are justified from all things. Read from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Because you could not be justified by the law of sacrifice. There was no, certain laws, there was no sacrifice for you, okay? 
meaning you break the Sabbath, death. Okay, homosexual, death. Idolatry, death. Go back. We only got 15 minutes. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31. Read. Wherefore I say unto you, all, oh, sorry. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Read. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Shall not be forgiven. So what, so what does that, go ahead. Unto men. So what does that mean? You now have tasted of the whole, the, the, the whole, the, um, the partakers with the Holy Ghost of the kingdom to come. And you go back into your sin and you die in your sin. You just blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Read on. Verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Read. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost. Meaning you backslide and die in your sin after you, you've been awakened, enlightened. Read. It shall not be forgiven uh -oh. him. Uh-oh. Christ said it's not going to be forgiven you. Read. Neither in this world. Right now. Neither in the world to come. Neither in the world to come, brothers and sisters. So if you've woken up to the, your nationality, these laws you got to keep, and you know how to get the kingdom, and you backslide, and you die in your sin, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Hold that. Second Thessalonians 2 and 10. We're going to read 10 through 12. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. And with all deceivableness, of unrighteousness. Those are big words. Deceivableness, unrighteous of unrighteousness. Let's say with all deceit of sin. With all deceit of sin. In them that perish. In them that have died. Because they receive not the love of the truth. See what, you see what the, the Bible says? Because they didn't receive the love of the truth. You backslide. You go and you die in your sin. You didn't receive the love of the truth. Read that they might be saved because that's the point to save your life read and for this cause god shall send them strong delusion shall what send them strong delusion the bible says god's going to send you a strong delusion you may believe the earth is flat now now you may believe that jeremiah 10 is not talking about christmas you may believe uh, uh multiple holes i could get the kingdom with multiple holes you may believe any any foolishness it's, the, it's God that chooses your, your delusions. Now, hold that. Give me Job 12 and 16. We're coming right back. Job 12 and 16. It's God that chooses your delusion now. You may think, what delusion is? You still in the truth. No the hell you ain't. I got sad news for you. No the hell you're not. If you hate your brother, you are not in the truth. I don't care if you got a million fringes on you. Read. Job chapter 12 and verse 16. With him is strength and wisdom. Read. The deceived and the deceiver are his. You see what the Bible says? The deceived and the deceiver are all his. It's all of the Lord. It's the Lord that chooses your delusions. Now go back. Second Thessalonians again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 11. Read. And for this cause. For this cause, because you didn't receive the love of the truth. God shall send them strong delusions, strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. You may believe that you need water baptism to get in the kingdom. You're believing lies. You're, you're going away from, from sound doctrine. Read. That they all might believe, sorry, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. But what? Believe not the truth. Keep going. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. You went back to your sin. You couldn't, you couldn't endure long enough. God said, I'm going to send you a strong delusion that you believe a lie, that you be damned, meaning you be dead, man. That's, what are we reading? The Bible, brothers and sisters. Romans 13 and 14. So what happened to make these brothers and sisters backslide after they were, they were enlightened? You know there's a kingdom coming. You know there's greatness, immortality coming. You said, ah, I'll take the dirty hoes instead. Read that, 13 and 14. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning repentance. And make not provision for the flesh. Uh-oh, here's the problem, brothers and sisters. A lot of us like to make provisions for the flesh. We leave that, that sin right in the back of our minds. Whenever we're ready to play with it, we just turn back and backslide a little. 
right? And when we backslide, now it grows and grows and grows. And as long as we don't check it, it's, eventually it's going to overtake you. Read. To fulfill the lust thereof. Because we need to fulfill our lust. Give me 2 Ezra 1677. Now let's go to the Apocrypha. Let's see what the Apocrypha got to say about all this. Second Edges, chapter 16 and verse 77. Read. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. You see what the Bible says? Destruction to you when you are bound in your sins. I mean, you can't get out. You tangled up. And you see nothing wrong with it. That's how far gone your mind is. The Bible says, woe to you that are bound with your sins. Read. And covered with their iniquities. And covered with their sins, the iniquities. Read. Like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. The Bible says, you're like, you're like an open field, but the field is covered with bushes and thorns. Meaning you can't really walk through that field. You got to chop away in. It's just too much. And then it says, what? Read the last part of the sentence. That no man what? That no man may travel through. So what does that part mean? Nobody can correct you now. Nobody can get to you. You're unattainable now. You're gone. Read on. It is left undressed. It is left undressed. You're, you're gone. Your mind is gone. Now you just counsel with your damn self. Read. And is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. You're going to get that, that nuclear fire. Hebrews 6 and 8. Let's see if we can read that in the, a little further in the New Testament. Hebrews 6 and 8. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 8. But that which beareth thorns uh -oh. and briars is rejected. <laughs> you see what the Bible says? He said it again. You're going to be rejected. You meddle with that sin and you're bound in it after you've been enlightened. What does it say? You're going to be rejected, brothers and sisters. Read. And is nigh unto cursing. At whose end is to be burned? You're going to get that fire. Jump now. Now that we got all the precepts to line it up, jump back up to verse 4. Verse 4. Now let's read it again. For it is impossible. Now we know why it is impossible, brothers and sisters. Because now you're bound in your sin. Read. For those who were once enlightened uh -huh. and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Uh huh and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away. You go back into your sin, and you're bound in your sin. To renew them again unto repentance. Brothers and sisters, I know it hurts, but I didn't say it. God did. It's impossible to renew those that were once enlightened back to repentance again. Read. Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. So all praises to the most high brothers and sisters. That's 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Amaziah. Soldier Mahalalil. And we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.